The transfusion of blood products, such as packed red blood cells, plasma, or platelets, is a task that requires the use of specific equipment, as well as the following of specific procedures, in order to guarantee the safety of the recipient. This video will demonstrate and explain the setup and preparation for transfusing blood products, as well as the process of transfusion. It begins with an order. To transfuse blood products, two orders will actually be needed. The first order will be for the product to be prepared. This is the order that triggers blood bank to have the appropriate product ready for use. This does not give permission to administer the product to the patient. The second order is to transfuse the product. This is the order that gives the nurse the ability to administer the blood product. The nurse can not administer a blood product unless there is an active order to transfuse that product. Taking a closer look at this particular order, you will notice that two units were ordered to be prepared for this patient, but only one unit is ordered to be transfused right now. That second unit will not be given at this time, but will stay available in blood bank in case further transfusion is necessary. Another order that will accompany blood product transfusion is the type and screen. This will need to be drawn and resulted before any blood product can be prepared. If there is a valid type and screen previously resulted, it may not be necessary to draw another one at this time. If the prepare and transfuse orders are in place, as soon as blood bank has the product available, it could be released to the floor. But before you release that blood, there are some tasks that must be completed. Verify your patient's IV access. The patient must have an IV. A 22 gauge is the minimum requirement, but larger gauge IVs will flow more smoothly. Verify that the patient has a signed consent for blood in the hard chart. There are two options. The first is a consent for transfusion of blood and or blood products. The patient, a witness, and the physician will need to have signed this in order to make it valid. The other option for consent is a passage in the consent for surgery and invasive procedures. At the bottom of this form, there is a section for blood that states that the patient consents to a transfusion for the duration of this hospitalization. Check the patient's vital signs. Ensure everything is within expected ranges. If there are any concerns regarding the patient's vitals, consult with the physician before moving forward with the transfusion. Make sure these pre-procedure vitals are entered into EPIC. With an IV in place, consent on the chart, and vitals within expectations, the next step is to gather the necessary supplies. All you will need is a small bag of saline. A small volume bag such as 100 milliliters or 250 milliliters is all that will be necessary for a blood transfusion. Normal saline is the only IV solution suitable for transfusion of blood products. For tubing, you will need a primary plum Y-type blood set. Let's take a closer look at the tubing. Y-type blood tubing sets have two spikes. One of these will connect to a saline bag. The other will connect to a blood product. The two spikes are identical, so it doesn't matter which one is used for either solution. They connect to a large filter chamber, which then connects to a standard cassette used for all Plum 360 tubing, and then it continues until it connects to the patient. We will begin by priming the tubing with saline. Close both roller clamps. Then connect the bag of saline to one of the spikes. Hang the saline bag from an IV pole and open the roller clamp below the saline. Squeeze the filter chamber multiple times to draw in saline until that saline fills to just above the top of the filter. Then continue to prime the cassette and the rest of the IV tubing with saline, as you would a normal primary IV tubing line. Invert the cassette. Pull the white plug open. Saline will begin to fill the large chamber on the cassette, and once it has completely filled, flip the cassette to allow it to continue to fill the remaining chambers and push all air out of the cassette. Then allow saline to run through the rest of the tubing before pushing the white plug closed. Then, close the roller clamp below the saline bag. It is possible to prime the tubing with blood product once it has arrived, but at Trinity Health Livonia, blood tubing is primed with saline for a couple of reasons. First, it is the manufacturer recommendation that it be primed with 0.9 normal saline. But secondly, and in my opinion most importantly, if during priming air bubbles are introduced into the cassette or line, it may be necessary to waste some fluid to clear the air from the set. It is totally acceptable to waste all the saline you need to in order to clear that air, but blood products are a special commodity, of which the world is always in shortage. If you have to waste blood product to clear air, every drop of blood wasted is a drop of blood that won't make it into a patient that is in dire need of it. Respect the blood and blood products. Don't waste them. Always prime with saline. You're now ready to release the blood product. Go to the Blood tab in the flow sheets. Click on Transfusion Report in the left column. A new window will open. Click on the Release hyperlink. 
This will prompt blood bank to send the blood to the floor. When blood products are received on the floor, there are some strict time frames that must be adhered to. Blood products must be initiated within 30 minutes of release from blood bank. If you won't be able to meet that time frame, blood should be returned to the blood bank. If the blood has not been hung within the first 20 minutes and there is any possibility that it won't be hung before 30 minutes, contact blood bank immediately and send the product back. If the blood is out of the freezer too long, it'll become too warm to be refrozen, and once the blood is greater than 10 degrees Celsius, it will be disposed of. Blood is a very limited resource, so be certain you adhere to the required time frames or send the unit back to blood bank right away. Blood products must be completely infused within four hours of release from blood bank. Any blood products that remain after four hours must be removed and discarded. Any tubing used for a blood product transfusion must also be disposed of after four hours. This may mean that in some instances, where multiple units are infused quickly, the same tubing could be used for those multiple units, as long as they will all be completed within the four-hour window. But if a consecutive unit of product will not be completed before the four-hour window closes, all new tubing must be used to start that transfusion. This will be the case for most blood transfusions on the inpatient units. The blood will arrive to the floor through the pneumatic tube system. Included with the blood will be a blood product infusion checklist. On one side will be important information regarding the administration of blood products, and on the opposite side will be space to track vitals for the infusion. No patient information is present on this form. Having received the blood, the product must be verified before administration, which means information will be rigorously checked and double-checked prior to giving any blood product to ensure that it is the correct product for this patient and that it is safe for transfusion. This process must be completed by two people. It must include at least one RN, but the second person could be another RN or a PCT trained for blood product verification. Attached to the unit of product, there will be a sticker. On one side of that sticker is patient information, and on the other side is product information. You will be matching this sticker to both the patient by using the wristband and to the product by matching the information to the bag itself. The verification process requires each person to listen to their partner read information while matching that information to their label. And then you will switch roles, and the listener will now read off of their label as the partner listens and matches that information. Begin by verifying the patient. One person will read from the sticker attached to the blood product, while the other listens and matches that to the patient's wristband. Read and spell the patient name. I have Thomas Cruz, T-H-O-M-A-S-C-R-U-Z. Read the birthday. Date of birth, 8-11-1975 and read the MRN, MRN 37860-1342. Now reverse the process, and the listener will read off the wristband as the partner matches to the sticker. Thomas Cruz, T-H-O-M-A-S-C-R-U-Z, date of birth, 8-11-1975, MRN 37860-1342. If there are no discrepancies, move on to verify the product by matching information from the bag to the information on the other side of the sticker. Read the unit number. Unit number W2022227913 Read the blood product code. Blood product code E0336RBCAS1. Read the expiration date. Expiration date 9-20-22. And finally, the blood type. Blood type is AB positive. And then check that the patient's blood type on the opposite side of the sticker matches to ensure that they are compatible. The patient is also AB positive. And then reverse the process and have the information read back. Unit number W2022227913 Blood product code E0336RBCAS1 Expiration date 9-20-22. Blood type AB positive. Patient also AB positive. If all information matches, the product is safe to administer. If there are any discrepancies, do not administer this product, but instead contact Blood Bank immediately. If the verification was successful, log into Epic to finish the process. Go to the blood flow sheet and click on Begin Blood Transfusion. A prompt appears to link the product to a specific IV. Choose the line that will be used for this transfusion. Then scan the unit number, product code, blood type, and expiration date barcodes. If pre-vitals were charted within the last 30 minutes, they should auto-populate in the vitals field. 
If they do not populate, enter them here. Scroll down to address some more required fields. Verify that consent was signed. If ordered, that any pre-medications were administered, that patient education was provided, normal saline is infusing, and remember, 0.9 normal saline is the only solution that is appropriate for use with a blood transfusion. Identify if a blood warmer was used, and finally, choose yes on administration charges to complete this sheet. After you choose accept, it will give you a chance to review your documentation before choosing sign off at the bottom, and then it will prompt you to have your partner sign in verifying that they completed the double verification process with you and that you found no discrepancies. After they have signed off, they are free to leave, and you will complete the blood administration process for this patient. Now hang the blood. Close the roller clamp leading to the saline. Use the remaining spike to access the blood product. Open the roller clamp below the product bag and squeeze the filter chamber to prime some product into the chamber. Program the infusion pump using the drug library. Push the button for the A line and use the soft keys to choose blood products from the available list. You'll start by entering the total volume of the bag, and this can be found on the sticker attached to the blood product bag. Every unit of blood is not the same, so always verify the volume before programming. Now you'll need to prime the entire line with blood. Make sure the IV is disconnected from the patient. Cover the IV with a swab cap, and then return to the pump. You can use the pump to quickly prime the line by having the detached IV line run with the maximum rate of 999 milliliters per hour. First enter the volume to be infused, which is the same as the volume of the blood bag. Then for the rate enter 999 and start. You can drain the fluid into a sink as you wait for the blood to reach the end of the tubing, and as soon as the fluid at the end of the tubing is colored slightly red, stop the infusion pump and attach the IV tubing to the patient's IV. Return to the pump to continue the program. Choose the A-line again, and don't clear the settings that are already entered. We'll just edit them. For the first 15 minutes of any transfusion, the blood will be administered at the slow rate of 50 cc's per hour. So change the rate from 999 to 50, and push start. As soon as you start the blood, get a new set of vitals on the patient and document them in EPIC. During this initial 15 minutes, the nurse will remain in the room at the bedside, observing the patient for any signs of reaction to the blood product. Common signs and symptoms of transfusion reactions can be found on the information page that arrived with the blood. If you notice any reaction in your patient, follow the instructions on this form. On the other side of that form is a place to track the required vital sign checks during a transfusion. You should have already completed the pre-transfusion vitals before you release the blood product, and just now, as you started the blood, you got the start time vitals. The next set will be done after the initial 15 minutes. Then vitals will be required every hour. But be aware that this is an hour from the start time, not from the last set of vitals. So if we started the infusion at 2 o'clock, the 15 minute vitals would be taken at 2.15, and the hour vitals would be taken at 3 o'clock. And if the blood were still running at 4, 5, or 6 o'clock, we would do vitals at those times. Another set will be needed as soon as the transfusion finishes, and then again one hour after the finish time. The vitals can be recorded on this form, but this is just for the easy visualization of trends. The vitals must be transferred into EPIC as well. This form is not a piece of permanent charting. All vitals must be entered into EPIC. If after 15 minutes there are no signs of reaction, increase the rate of the infusion. For non-complicated patients, the infusion should be completed within one and a half to two hours. Patients that have CHF or fluid overload will need a decreased rate of infusion to protect them from any further fluid overload. Remember, the maximum time for an infusion is four hours. When you are checking vitals, also listen to lung sounds. If sounds such as crackles develop, it is a sign that the patient is experiencing fluid overload and the infusion should be slowed. When changing the rate, enter the desired time of infusion into the duration field. Policy does not specify a specific rate of the infusion, only specific time frames. Some units will have more or less than 325 milliliters of blood. They still need to be delivered within a specific time frame. So entering a duration of one and a half or two hours will allow the pump to calculate that specific rate for this unit of blood. When the unit is empty and the filter chamber is also empty of blood, there is still some blood in the tubing. To complete this transfusion, this fluid should also be infused into the patient. Close the roller clamp to the empty bag of blood and open the clamp to the saline bag. Prime a small amount of saline into the chamber and resume the infusion. When the tubing is completely filled with saline, the transfusion will be completed. Obtain a set of vitals at this time. Now remove the blood product bag and dispose of it. 
No blood product bags or tubing, either full or empty, should ever be left in a room if they are not actively in use. If another unit is ordered, and it will not be finished within four hours of initiating the first unit, a completely new IV set will be required. In Epic, the blood product will need to be completed. Go to the blood flow sheet and enter Stopped into the action row. Then right-click on Transfuse RBC and click Complete Transfuse RBC. The Transfuse section for this flow sheet will be removed. The transfusion of blood products can be very dangerous if not done properly. It is important to follow all the steps and time frames when administering blood products to a patient. When transfusing platelets or plasma, different time frames for transfusion will be used. These can be referenced in the transfusion policy.